All right, let's learn how to prep a sequence for finishing. That means we're gonna send all of the video to color correction so that it's beautiful and ready for broadcast TV. And we're gonna send all of the audio to an audio mixer so that they can clean it up and make it sound as good as possible. And so that all of the audio levels are within legal ranges. Okay, so the first step to all of this is we need a reference file. So that's easy. We're gonna take our sequence and we'll export it. Now, depending on who you're working with, this can either be an H.264, a high quality H.264, or it can be a ProRes proxy file. So what I'm gonna recommend we do is go with an H.264 export. Just 1920 by 1080 and good settings. We want you know your bit rate to probably be somewhere around 18 or higher. That's gonna give you a really quality H.264 file that we can use as a reference to make sure that all of the work we do while prepping still looks good. So let's export this and we'll circle back. I'm gonna send it to our export and we'll call this reference. Next up, we wanna make sure we can always go backwards on our timelines in case we mess up anything. Not that we're gonna do that, but just in case. So we'll come here and we'll duplicate this timeline and we'll call this V2 still. And I'm gonna give it a dash PRP so that we know that this is our prep sequence. So I'm gonna do that, open up that timeline and then close our original so that we can always go back to this source offline edit if we need to. The next thing we need to do is jump into our timeline and I like to start by removing all of the disabled clips that are in here. Now there are shortcuts that you can use to do this. I'm gonna do this manually. Um, another handy way to take care of disabled clips like this is to go up into your sequence settings and go to simplify sequence and here you can actually choose all of the things you want to remove from a sequence and Premiere will duplicate the sequence and remove those things automatically for you. Personally I like to have a little bit more manual control over this so that I know that I'm not messing anything up. So now that we've got all of our disabled clips out of here we need to also consolidate our sequence. We need to clean it up so that it's not this big jumbled mess. Now, we need to go through our sequence and kind of scrub and see what we're working with because things here where we have stacked clips, these could be composited clips where maybe it's a split screen on this side and this side. Um, and in that case, we would want to make sure that we keep all of these clips the way that they are. We also want to make sure that these adjustment layers that are hanging around actually do something. Like in this case, this adjustment layer has nothing in the effect controls. So it's not actually doing anything in the sequence. So we're going to remove that. So I'll check these as well. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, so let's get rid of those. If we come over here though, we'll see that there's a transform effect applied to this. So this is how we're scaling this clip right here. So we're definitely gonna leave that alone. Now, what we need to do is we'll continue to uh, consolidate our sequence by moving all of our clips to the very bottom video layer. There's a couple of ways to do this. We can grab the clip and hold Alt and push down, and that'll overwrite every clip that's on top of it. So that's an easy way. Another way that you can do this is you can select your clips, hold Shift and move down, and that'll keep them from going left or right. Hold on while I go through and do all of this really quickly. Now you'll see that we still have a bunch of graphics up here that we've got to deal with. We'll get to those in a minute. The next thing I want to do is to do the same process with our audio files. So I'm going to come here and clean up the audio tracks and organize them in a way that I have all of my dialogue on the upper layers, sound effects on the middle layers, and all of my music on the lower layer. And now looking at the dialogue, you can see that these clips overlap. I wanna consolidate this as much as possible. So I'm gonna zoom in and make sure that there's no relevant audio here. And you can look at the waveforms and see that there's not. So I'll slide this over. So I'll trim this and then move that up so that we're in good shape. Do the same over here. Let's do this, there we go. Okay, zoom back out. And now let's take a look at our sound effects. So we'll move our video out of the way and come here. So I'm gonna move our sound effects up. And again, the idea here is we wanna simplify the sequence as much as possible. You wanna keep sound effects that are similar on the same track. That helps our audio engineers as they go through and do the mix. So these look like whooshes. This is not, this is gonna go up there. So these whooshes are all on the same track and he can apply and our audio engineer can apply the same sort of treatment to this track a lot quicker if they're all organized like this. Now we'll select our music, move it down, and zoom out. We have 
all of our dialogue up here, this is our voiceover track, coming in below that on this, <clears throat> coming in below that in this area is all of our sound effects for the spot. And then we have our music. Now there's one more step to the music that we need to do. I'm gonna go in here and you'll notice that we've got this little zigzag. That means that we've used the essential sound panel to stretch this audio clip. When we send our prep to an audio engineer, this remix section sometimes will not export correctly. So the best way to deal with this is to actually export it ourselves first and then put it back into the sequence. Let's look at how to do that. So I'm gonna duplicate this by alt and dragging down and that creates a new copy of the clip. And then I'm gonna solo this clip, take off any of the effects. So we'll come here. I'm gonna remove all of the effects that are already on it. And then I'm gonna mark in and out and then export only that audio. So I'll come here, we're gonna set this as a WAV file. <clears throat> and what I like to do is to use the same name of the audio file. So I'll come here, go back to export, make sure that we're using our source end out because that's what we selected. And then I'll put a dash on the end of this and call it remix just so it's a unique name. Okay. And where I'm gonna send this is actually to the project folder for this project. So let's go here, audio source, and I'll make a new folder and just call this here pro remixes. Something like that so that we know what we're working with. We'll save. And if you wanna save yourself a trip, we can even come into general and say import into project and it'll bring this back into our project when we're done. So let's export. Now we're going to grab this file that was automatically imported for us and overwrite what we just exported. We'll turn off solo, we'll remove our in and out marks, and now I'm going to select our original clip and copy it with a command C, and then I'm going to paste its attributes. And we want all the attributes from our original clip to go into our remix clip. Great. And now we'll simply grab our fade here, put it on the front, and then overwrite. That way, this is a real media file that the exports that we send to our audio engineer, it can reference and we won't have any issues when we send it to them. Last thing we want to do is let's remove all of our audio tracks down here that are still empty. The easy way to do this is to go to sequence, delete tracks. I've got this set to a keyboard shortcut. I'll say audio tracks, all empty tracks and say okay. And we're good to go there. That looks really nice. All right, so let's reduce that and go look at our video again. So back at the video, we need to get this organized so that we get rid of these extra graphics that aren't doing anything and also organize our graphics a little bit better. So if we look at this, we've got some stacked graphics here and I like for this to be as organized as possible. So I'm gonna move this up and just get everything on the same few video layers as I can so that I know when I look at it, these are all of my graphics. And if we scrub through here, we'll see that this graphic overlays all of these three. So those can go away. So we'll bring that down. There we go. Same thing here. We'll bring this down. Whoop, that grabbed our audio. We wanna just grab the video. Great. And then this lower third, which we see throughout the video, this guy right here, we're gonna bring it down and also give it a little gap. All right, and then in this case, we're gonna delete these. And that is a cleaned and prepped sequence. The last thing that we have to do to make sure that we didn't mess anything up when we were going through our cleaning process is we wanna come here and we're gonna import the file that we exported when we started. So I'm gonna go here, grab our reference file, say import, and let's load it up into the source monitor. Then in my timeline, I'm gonna go all the way to the head and then I'm gonna gang these two clips together. So gang source and program monitors, okay? And then I'm simply gonna scrub through my sequence. And what I wanna do is kind of look between the two videos. I'm gonna stare right here and make sure that everything on the left-hand side and everything on the right-hand side match. If there's anything that doesn't match, I would have messed up something and I need to go back and fix it. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's clear this. We'll close all, great. We gotta get this prepped for video and audio, and there's a little bit more that we need to do for those separately. So what I like to do now is I'm gonna duplicate my prep sequence two more times. This one, I'm gonna call prep-v for video. 
And this one I'll call prep-a for audio. Let's start with audio because it's basically the easy one. So what I like to do is hold down Alt and then select all of my video clips. Holding down Alt will make sure that I only select the video clips and that I won't select any audio. If you want to be doubly sure that you didn't select any audio, go ahead and lock all of your audio tracks. I have a shortcut map to Shift A so that when I do that, all of the audio tracks down here get locked. Now with my video selected, audio locked, I'm going to delete all of my video. I'll go again to my delete tracks and say delete video tracks. Okay, we're in good shape. So now I'm going to unlock my audio. Good there. And now I'm going to export an AAF. In this case, these settings are really important for our audio engineers. We want to make sure that we break out to mono, so we're going to click enable, and that all of these other settings look good. We want at least two second frames, so we're going to add 48 frame handles. Say OK. It's going to ask us where we want to export. We'll go to our exports folder, say save. And that file is ready to go to our audio engineers. Typically, these two files, the reference and the prep, are all that we need to send to our audio engineering team so that they can give us a good mix back. Now, the next part of this is if we are sending our prep to a colorist and we're going to use a ProRes 444 workflow. Now, what that means is that we're essentially going to remove all of our graphics and create a textless pass and send them just a video file that they can work from. So to do that, we're going to do the opposite of what we did in our audio prep. I will lock all of my video tracks, and I'm going to select all by hitting Command A and delete all of my audio. Then I'll go ahead and remove all of my audio tracks down here. Say OK. Let's go ahead and close these. Close other timelines. Great. Clean this up. Our colorist does not need all of these graphics. They'll have the reference files for that, and that's great. So what we want to do in this case is we're actually going to remove all of our graphics files. And because we organized our sequence, this is super easy to do now. So I'm going to delete this and go ahead and simplify our video tracks yet again. All right. And this is a super simple sequence. This has everything that we need to send to our colorist. The next trick that we need to do, though, is we want to make sure that we turn off our proxies. So we're going to turn off our proxies. We also need to make sure that we analyze any frames that pop up. A good way to check to make sure all of your warp stabilizer effects are taken care of is hit Command F, go to search, hit effects, contains warp, and then find all. And that will highlight every clip in your sequence that has a warp stabilizer effect. So we'll take this, come here, we'll analyze. The next thing we need to do after we get all of our warp stabilizer effects taken care of is I want to go and look at the clips in the timeline. We need to make sure that we remove any color that's already been added to these clips. So I'm going to come here, open up the clips in my project panel, and I'm going to select everything that's in here. And I'll right click and go to modify color. And at this point, right now, it's saying that it's using our Sony S-Log3 color space. But what that does, it's a little counterintuitive, is Premiere Pro is automatically assigning a LUT to this effect. I don't want to do that right now. What I want is the source log media. So I'm going to go to Override Media Color Space, open this up, and say Rec 709 in this particular case. Say OK. And now you can see that all of our media clips in here are in that S log color space. This is what our colorist needs. Or if we're coloring in bay, this is what we also need. All right, so now we can export this ProRes 444 file for our colorist. So to do that, we'll go to our preset, or we can make it ourselves. So ProRes 44444. I'm also going to make sure we're going to our exports folder, change our name that says PR1234, so that we know what kind of file type this is. And this is where we set our frame size. So this is going to be the frame size that we deliver at the end of the project. So if this is 4K, you need to make sure that this is exported as 4K or Ultra HD or HD, whatever the project deliveries call for. In our case, it's 1920 by 1080. Also, to make sure that we're getting the full benefit of our 4444 color sampling, we need to render at maximum depth and use maximum render quality. I also like to go here and turn this on to 16-bit. We don't need alpha because there's not an alpha channel. Um, so we'll leave this at 16-bit and export. Boom. 
And there's one last step that we need to do for our colorist, and that is to export an EDL of this entire sequence. Now an EDL is an edit decision list. So we'll go up to File, Export, EDL, make sure that we're on our prep video file. We can turn off everything, and we wanna make sure that we go to video, video one, so that's only gonna export tracks on video one, nothing up here on video two or three or four. I'm gonna turn off all of my audio channels to really simplify this. We're gonna include blank events and include transitions. This is important. All right, and at that point, we'll say okay. And then we're gonna send this again to our exports folder. So for a ProRes 4x4 color workflow, all you typically need to send your colorist is going to be a ProRes 4444 file, an EDL, and the reference QuickTime of your offline edit. And that's a quick look at how to prep a simple sequence for finishing. It gets a little more complex on larger projects, but these are the bullet points that you need for almost everything that you do. If you like what you saw, like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.